This is one of the last, this is probably the last video we'll take of the farmhouse. It's uh, been auctioned and it is, uh, we haven't closed yet. And Greg is gonna take a picture. I'll, I'll take you on a tour of the farm. This is the house that my grandpa, Oni, Edward Oni built, probably 11 or, uh, 1911 or 12, I can't remember. He got married the next year to Olga Haugen, uh, my grandma Oni, and the next year, my dad, Arthur Oney, was born. Um, so this has been uh, lived in since 2000, or 1913, at least. Uh, my grandpa was born, uh, well, I don't think he was born there, actually. He grew up about a fourth of a mile east of here, and they homesteaded, his parents did, came here. I think grandpa was four when they came here, and, um, uh, uh, lived, I don't know, but Grandpa probably did too. They lived in a sod, kind of like cave. And Dad wrote stories about, stories he'd heard about the snakes falling in from the ceiling uh, on occasion and Grandma having to sweep them out the door. So anyway, Grandma and Grandpa lived here when they got married and my dad was born here. And then four years later, uh, Dad's brother Floyd. Floyd died when he was only, I think, 18. So I'm not sure when they built the barn and things. Um, uh, it, it was 120 acres. The field to the south, uh, we call the South 40. It's actually more than 40. It's got beans in it this year. Uh, it had corn. We never grew beans when I lived here. There was uh, small grain or oats. Uh, and they rotated uh, every other year. There'd be the small grain or the corn. Uh, then we had alfalfa um, in a little field north of the house here. So let's go around, Greg. I'll take you on a tour. Dad um, painted that barn when he was in his 70s after he retired. I think he was in his 70s, at least after he was 65. I think he re-roofed it too. It looks like it could use a re-roof again. These trees were not here when I grew up. Uh, Grandma and Grandpa both liked to garden and they had really pretty flowers. Uh, another thing that's different now from when Grandma and Grandpa lived here, um, Mom, a few years ago, I don't know, maybe it was 10 years ago, uh, built on this garage so that she could continue to be independent as she was aging. She knew we wouldn't like her drive, walking out in the snow to get to her car. So she built on this little um, but nice garage and this kind of breezeway that she could walk in that she didn't have to go outside at all. Um, let's continue on with the tour here, Greg. Um, the same over here, this used to be open. Now it's solid trees just filled in. I remember when they built the silo, that was a really big deal to have such a big building built. This is asparagus right here. Uh, Eldine planted things all over when he moved back, probably about 35 years ago, uh, and then decided he wasn't leaving. He was the first son and he was gonna stay here. Um, but he put little, little patches of vegetables and flowers all wherever he felt like. So we're leaving this for the new owners and there is nice asparagus there. There's a whole lot of weeds mixed in with it now. Um, oh, something else, let me point out, the, uh, the windmill, the blades are off of it now, uh, but the windmill pumped water. There's a well there uh, and it would pump water. And then there was a, a pipe system that uh, brought the water over here. I would carry the water from here and down past these white buildings here. This is the corn crib. Um, it had bins on the top for, for oats. Uh, and there was a, a, I don't know, kind of a funnel thing along the side that we could pull it open and let the oats run into our pail. Um, the corn crib is so that air can get in there and that's what we, we had stored corn on the cob in there. Now these days they don't store it that way, they shell it right away so it wouldn't be functional. But the roof is gone on this so it wouldn't be any good anymore. When, uh, Greg, you remember that really well I'm sure. You love the sheep and Pam, Ann, and Greg, you all liked coming 
and seeing the sheep here. When the sheep lived here, I think they had about 20 head, and that was after I had left. Um, the, the sheep did a really nice job of maintaining the yard. They didn't have to mow it when the sheep were here. So uh, Ruthann had to help with the chores when she was growing up, but then Dad became a driver's license examiner, and kind of they stopped farming as much. So Ruthann and Kent didn't have as many farm responsibilities, although they had their 4-H projects. But it was different by then. They didn't have to get up and do a lot of chores before they went to school, like Eldine, Olin, and I did. Um, so it was changing. So we have more changes. This big white building here, um, that shop, Eldine built that for, put all of his stuff in that he moved up from Tennessee. But I don't think he ever got it moved there. He put it in the barn and mom and dad said he couldn't keep it in the barn, that he had to build a shed to put it in. So he built a shed and I think he still left it in the barn uh, because Kent and Ruth Ann and I cleaned it out uh, just this this uh, spring. There was a whole lot of stuff that LD had moved from Tennessee like 40 years ago, 35 at least. So let's see, should we continue? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're on the north side of the house and um, mom always liked to have little uh, little gardens, Eldine did too. She had a pump here for a while that was had been in the breezeway in the house, uh, little flower gardens, but there are so many of them and we just can't maintain them, to, couldn't keep up with them. These, uh, there was one garage here that was over here um, when when I first came down here with Grandpa and Grandma, and he lived here. So there was only the one garage over there, but that was kind of far from the house. I'm not sure why they put it that far away. So Mom and, and Dad uh, moved it up here closer to the house. Can't remember where they got the second garage from. Uh, Kent would know. Uh, but they were not there when I was growing up. So we uh, living on the farm in South Dakota, um, we can burn things and we burn most of our trash. There was no trash pickup when I was a kid. Um, the tin cans, everything would go in there and then periodically they'd go out and maybe bury them in the trees or something because there was no disposable for them and you had all these room in the trees. Uh, the farm equipment that wasn't used went out in the trees too. There's still a lot of it in the trees that is uh, kind of abandoned. It'd be nice if they could have been sold or used, but that's what everybody did in those days. Um, these buildings here, uh, all three of these, the, the two little white ones and the tin one in the middle, they came from my grandma Jensen's house. Um, uh, they were, the, the tin one was built to s store all of the valuables from all of the relatives. Um, grandma had brothers that weren't married and then they had relatives that had died and they kept all of the, all of their treasures there. There was a lot of trunks in there. So when um, my aunt died, um, after a few years, mom just had that building picked up and brought down here. And they brought the other two down too. And then mom proceeded to put more valuables in it and save those for for us I guess there's two more here and they have both fallen down um, the uh, raccoons get into them and destroy them they break the windows tear up the roof and mom had a lot of stuff at all of them and now they are you know it was lost some of it she probably would say the last thing she built probably I don't know 10 15 years ago was this little white building down here. This was her little house on the prairie, uh, she called it, and it was a storage for all of her valuable things. Unfortunately, again, the, the humidity is so bad here, so things get moldy. Mice got into it, and I sent a pickup load of stuff to the dump. Uh, my neighbor picked it up and took it for me. There was a few things in there that we were able to salvage, but Mom had a whole lot of valuable stuff uh, in her mind, but they had a lot of precious 
memories, I think, for her, and she couldn't part with them. So, let's see, what else should I show you? Oh, let's walk all the way around. Oh, uh, the, this, this building here at the, alongside the house was called a summer kitchen when Grandpa and Grandma lived here. It was separated from the house that people cooked in there so you keep your house cooler. There was a cook stove in there. They can, and we, we washed clothes in there. We had, uh, when I was growing up, we had a ringer type washer and, uh, you know, the two rinse tubs for the clothes and you have to wring them after they went through each tub and then hang them out in the line to dry. Although we did have a dryer when we came down here, a clothes dryer. Uh, one of the first in the neighborhood probably to get it. I think because we had so many kids, maybe. Mom couldn't get the diapers dry. She got her first dryer when David was born in uh, 1950 when we lived up at the Esser place. And uh, she said it rained that whole summer. He was born in May and she could never get his diapers dry in the days when all the diapers had to be washed by, by machine. And when we moved down here to this house, I was 10 and uh, mom was pregnant with June. Uh, we moved down in January, June was born in February. We moved from a house that didn't have any bathrooms and the running water was a pump that was in the kitchen, a hand pump in the kitchen sink. And then we moved down here and mom wouldn't move down until the bathroom upstairs was completed. Uh, so then we had two bathrooms. She said that she knew that she uh, needed to get it done when she was pregnant and before she moved down because she said, I knew if we moved down there that those men would never finish it. So she made darn sure that she had that finished before uh, we moved down here and then number child number six was born June and later Kent was born when we were down here also so um, oh, Then later mom uh, after we were all gone mom converted this What we called the shanty after it was the summer kitchen and it was a shanty uh, mom converted it to the tea room and uh, she mom kind of was like a little kid in a lot of ways. She liked to play, and she just had so much fun having tea parties here, inviting her friends for tea. It was interesting because we had a water source in here when I was growing up so we could do laundry, but they took the water out of there, and so she had to make the tea and coffee in the uh, kitchen and bring it out, so it didn't seem too handy to me, but I think it was kind of like mom having a playhouse that she liked to, I don't know, like, like to, like to play. <laughs> Mom had a good imagination. She liked holidays and uh, liked to go all out. I remember when I was in grade school, I'd never heard of May Day until Mom made May baskets for me to bring to school for all of the kids in school for May Day, which, like I said, I'd never even heard of. But she'd been a teacher, and I think that she celebrated all the holidays when she was a teacher. She liked the artwork, and uh, she liked to play. So, raising, raising us, she always made a lot of our birthdays and uh, the holidays. This is solid trees now. This did not used to be this way. There was pear trees down here at one point. Uh, we had a couple mulberry trees, but our mulberry best memories are of Grandma Jensen's place. That was the good mulberry tree. We had evergreens that were in this area, big, tall evergreens that were here when Grandpa and Grandma Ione lived here. Evergreen trees have since died, but there's other volunteers that have come up. So we're walking under the clothesline. I have hung many clothes out here. Uh, this this is an addition to the house right here that mom and dad also put on after all of us kids were gone. Uh, the master bedroom was really small, had one small closet, and they doubled the size of it or more and put in uh, significant closets. So it made a lot better size um, master bedroom. There already was a bathroom in there from when my grandma and grandpa lived here. I believe they put the bathroom in when... Uh, Grandma was sick. She died of cancer about 50, uh, I don't know, about 50, I think. 
and um, uh, they converted the pantry that was in the kitchen, they closed off the kitchen and uh, put a door into the bedroom and made that the bathroom. So they did have the one bathroom in this house uh, by about 1950, some years later. This is uh, what we call the South Porch. It's had a few renovations. It doesn't have some of the uh, more decorative stuff. I think it used to have more fancy stuff around the top. Uh, I, they at one point taken these front railings off but they were recently put back on uh, when mom was trying to get it renovated again. He didn't do a great job of, of doing this. The floor is kind of bad. They put a indoor outdoor carpet in there and it didn't last very long. So we have almost finished the floor here. Well, June got a lot of things to plant in here and uh, I think Ruth Ann brought things to plant too. Oh, you know what? Let's, uh, uh, Greg has been good at filling the bird feeders. That was kind of, we didn't do that when I was a kid. Eldine had uh, started feeding birds there and there's a lot of great birds that were coming here. Uh, Greg saw a cardinal again the other day, but there's not nearly as many here now. Uh, one theory is that we, the cats uh, are not very welcoming for birds. But we had, there was cats here when Eldine was here too, so I, that doesn't really make sense to me. I think, I don't know if he put more out, he had a, a bird uh, bath out in a, a water container for them. I think that probably helped too. So, we have just done the whole tour. I guess one other little thing we could point out, uh, this rose bush doesn't look that great anymore, but that I think came from uh, Grandma Jensen's place. Uh, the yellow roses, or and I think it came from where mom was born actually, so it goes back a long, long time. But Ann put it in her yard in Parker, and it's just kind of like a weed, it keeps coming up all over with sticky little thorns. So it's it did extremely well for Ann, but she, it, she's not really enjoying it. So that's the end of the video for today.